All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk with Stephen. So uh, I know you have missed uh, some of the session today, some of the previous session. So I'm so sorry for missing few of the session. But uh, introducing about Talk with Stephen, this is a weekly talk show that has been hosted by me. I'm Stephen Rachia. I'm the host for this talk show. And uh, where I will be interviewing uh, individuals who are successful in terms of their uh, in terms of their life, in terms of their own career, their business, in their parenting, in their relationship, this kind of people. We will bring them and then we will ask them to share their stories, their inspiring stories with us because every single one of us uh, have an incredible story that we need to share it out with people so that they can learn from each other. So that is the purpose of this talk show, to inspire people, for, for inspire you to do what you love to do and to be a happier person. So we have been doing this talk show for the past, uh, I think, six months. I have started this talk show during uh, February and we have been running. Now it's October, so it's going to be November. So it's been running until right now. So thank you for all the people who have joined uh, here today. For those of you who are joining new, we have a lot of talk show with uh, very good topics like this. We have previous sessions. Everything is in, sorry, in my Facebook, so you can go and check it out everywhere and watch all the contents every now and then if you want so this talk show is is also actually co-organized by et ideas a social business incubator that guides people on their businesses to develop it into the next level and also pmdk an organization and ngo that focus on guiding the youngsters to uh, bring out their potentials to uh, you know work with them to give them the resources the guidance the support that they need to develop themselves uh, to be uh, successful uh, youngsters as well so this is who we are. And today we have a very interesting topic to talk about, which is raising successful children. And uh, this is a topic that I also wanted to listen, even though I'm not a parent, but I wanted to know how to raise the successful children as well. So we have Miss Valsla Krishnan with us today, who is uh, personally my mentor. She has been guiding me in terms of my own career and everything. So she has been mentor for so many people. And she is the co-founder, she's a founder and the CEO of Globetrotter Consultancy, an amazing company where uh, she guides individuals on how they can focus on their, uh, you know, follow their heart to do what they love to do and also achieve the goal that they have set in terms of their own happiness, uh, life, health and wealth relationship as well. So she has been, over the years, she's been working with thousands of people and many of their life has actually changed because of that. And uh, today she's going to talk about raising successful children. So she has these two beautifully amazing kids called Hira and Harsha. They are the two superstars that I know right now in Malaysia. They are very famous. Uh, Hira is a 22-year-old singer-songwriter and she won many, many awards. Recently, this year, she won the Best Entertainer Award uh, in USA for the uh, for the amazing song called Feel Alive. You can go and check it out in Spotify, in YouTube, everywhere she's there. And uh, she's also a student in Harvard University. Um, I never know anybody from Malaysia to actually go for Harvard, but she managed to go for it. And um, she also the co-founder of Ascendance, a nationwide youth movement and 2019 Diana Award recipient. And then we have uh, Harsha and Valsla's second daughter, who is also the co-founder of Ascendance and the acting CEO of Ascendance. And she is also the CEO of StartMyName.com. And she's also an undergrad student at University of Pennsylvania. She have a, at 18 years old, she actually wrote a book called The Making of Teenage Entrepreneur. If you have haven't, if you haven't read about that book, get it for your kid or get it for yourself. Read it. It's an amazing book that I read it. That is the only book that I finished in two days in my life. The book is so good. And she has sold about like the book has been sold about like thousand copies for this year alone. So that's how good the book is. And she is a mother. Walsala is the mother of these two amazingly successful kids. So uh, it's very it's my honor to have Walsala here with me today. So without any further ado, let's welcome Walsala. Hello, Yay. Stephen. Hello. Hello how are you? Nice. Uh, very nice intro, Stephen. Nice to hear the intro Thank itself. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, Vasla is here with us today to talk about raising successful children. And I want this talk show to be as personalized as to our audience as possible. That's how the talk with Stephen always work. So uh, what you need to do is ask your questions. Because if you didn't ask your question, I have a lot of questions with me. I will just ask the question, all the answers that I want to know. So if you're a parent who is watching, you wanted to know something personally for your particular, your children, just ask away the question. Vasla will answer it if it is possible. So, Walsala, how are you, Walsala? 
I'm good. When I heard your introduction and I look at the topic, raising successful children, when I was raising them, I don't know whether they're going to be successful or not. I just can hope and, and, and you know, pray. Okay, whatever I'm doing turns out right. <laughs> nice, Elsa, nice. Uh, I think that uh, to start off this session, I have this one question. Who is asked? Uh, the question is asked by one of the parents. She asked something like, uh, is it stressful to raise two successful children at your house? So... <laughs> Uh, is it stressful? Uh? Yeah. The question. Uh, they ask when I'm stressful to raise successful children. Um, when I'm stressed, it is stressful. When <laughs> I'm fine, it's fine. I enjoy the time with my children and it's nice and all. So it depends. When It depends on how I am. And I didn't know this before. Uh, when, I, when I was much younger and I was... Uh, Okay, when, when I was very busy, that means I have my work, I have my corporate work, and then I was a mm. single mom as well. I mean, my parents helped me take care of it, but in the end, I'm the mother, right? So I need to make sure everything is done. And that's when they'll do all the funny, funny things like, you know, so Hasha is in the morning school, means morning school, going to school time, they'll come and tell me, today got art project, I forgot to buy art block. Huh? <laughs> so you, you will realize all these kind of things and all. So, you, so there are moments of stressfulness. But what I've realized now that I work with people, I work with, uh, with our mind and our ability to cope with stress and all, and manage our emotions, I realize it only happens, it's very stressful when I'm stressful. Okay. So when I find income, I'll tell them, okay, find solution. For example, I'll just tell your responsibility, right? You going to school, right? So you, you need to uh, take responsibility for it. Another thing I realize is as the children grow up is uh, um, when I'm not stressful is I allow them, first they, first they must have a goal, then they have a purpose, then it becomes their responsibility. That means if you tell the child you're not responsible, you're not responsible, the father is like, what are you talking about? But let's say they got, they got for example, right, um, they both got scholarship. So when they got scholarship, they have to maintain their grades in school. So now studying is no more my responsibility. It's their responsibility. You study, you don't study, you got time. It, it's your problem, not my problem. So I don't have the stress. The stress I give back to them. So <laughs> it's their stress. Even sometimes I'll say, let's go for a movie. Then they'll say, no, no, this week got an exam. I said, no, no, you finish studying and earlier and we go for a movie. They'll be like, you are the only mother will say like this. Because now I know it's it's they, they are already taking that thing very seriously. So they just need to rest and relax for a while. So the mm. stress is no more on me. The stress is on them because they are uh, working for their goals. Yeah, when you're talking about this, was like, I can see that there is you are totally different from you know my mother, the parents that I know, my sisters. They are also parents because what they will usually tell is exam time study. You you I don't care. You just study. So uh, that's only part study part. There are other parts also that you are different. What are the things that you actually did differently in your parenting when you're raising them up? Okay, okay Stephen, now what I need to have like one year talk, Stephen, and because <laughs> so many things I did differently, but I can tell you how it started me being different. In the beginning, I wasn't because I wasn't really, I mean, uh, mm, first of all, I have children, but it's like uh, I'm coping with my work, I'm coping with my own things, I'm coping with my children. So I'm just I'm just running around coping with many things, okay? And I do what I can. Managing things. Uh, many things. But uh, many things means like work and you, you uh, mother will know lah, there are a lot of things to do, okay? You will take care of yourself, you will take care of your child, especially when the child is small. But my changing point came when I met ET Ideas. Okay. One okay. is... Uh, one is because it was a social business incubator. There was many people out there uh, who I met there who were out of my comfort zone. That means they are not my family. They are not people I work with. They are, they are not my circle, not my group. So it opened up my exposure, my possibility to other things. Secondly, they were talking about things like goal setting. How powerful your mind is. So I went there for myself. Because I wanted to be an entrepreneur at that time, started Globe Proto, and also I was actually there for myself. But then, um, what am I going to do with my children? So I, it's good for them also. So I brought them along. So actually, okay. they just came along. They came mm -hmm. along. When I found something that was good for me, I brought them along with it. And if you ask me, Harsha was interested in the uh, in the talks and all in the beginning. So Hira wasn't. 
Kira was like, ah, I don't want this spiritual talk. What are you talking about? I don't want all and all. I'm busy. I got things to do. What's she doing at home? She's sitting home and watching TV. Okay. <laughs> but, but but that time was physical this one. So we will, I and Harsha will go and then we like we, we send out a, a cake photos to her. And she said, hey, you're having cake. I say, yes, but we, uh, you didn't tell me you're going to have cake. I said, I didn't know. I went there. I saw the cake I bought. So you want me next time you come. So since then, they start coming. But eventually, it rubbed on on them. And the, 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 the core things that rubbed on on them is having a goal, okay? ha having a purpose. So when they find their purpose, uh, then they become engaged. If you ask me, that was my turning point. And another thing mm -hmm. I realized is handling myself, my emotions. Mm -hmm. This is the part where I said, if I'm okay, means, uh, let's say example, right? Um, if I got a very important meeting, that day only I, I'll see like, oh, yo, your laundry all on the floor. You never put the laundry there. Then I'll start shouting and I say, I'll, I'll start, uh, you know, I'll go berserk. And they all start running around cleaning up because, you know, mom went berserk. Okay. <laughs> but eventually I realized that uh, this is because I do the personal development program. I cannot do a personal development program if I myself don't know what I'm doing. So it, it first is my learning about myself. What am I doing in this? Then I realized, oh, when I'm stressed, I'm reacting and these things all become big deal and I'm actually letting it out on them. Whereas when, when, I'm, when I'm fine and all, because it's not like today only they left their clothes there. Yesterday also they did. But yesterday it didn't bother me. Today it mm. bothers me because I am already in a stress mode. So when I'm in a stress mode, I keep quiet. Huh? That means I try to just do the work I need to do. Tomorrow I'll come and deal with this, this clothes thing. So if I feel this is okay, I can live with it, I live with it. I cannot live with it. It means I need to talk to them or I need to handle them, but not in a, uh, in a, in a reactive manner. So when mm. I start doing this, they also start doing the same thing. Very nice. It's, it's about yourself. When you are not, when you, you are handling yourself better, they manage to learn from you and then because they learn from the parent, right? They look at the parent yes. what they're doing. Yes, so, correct. Like so if I when, press when, up and I shout, they will they they won't shout, but they will counter my argument better than me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like you told just now, like they have a goal, what they want. Like here I want to become a singer, I Arsha wanted to become something, so they have a goal. And they are also looking at you. You also have a goal at that point of time. You want to develop yourself. You want to develop your business and everything. So when you working on your goal, that's inspire them to work, yes. you know, take a step to move on their goals as well. Yes. So very nice. Uh, I have the, uh, this question. How did you let go of the control that you have oh. towards children? So like, you, you know, you... Since all the <laughs> sorry, suddenly. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. How, how did you let go? Because as a parent, we live up in a certain way and we want the kid to be also to follow the steps like you go pray, go pray now and this kind of things. But maybe the kid don't want to go and pray or they don't want to do this. Yeah. Something. So if how you did ask you me, do this? This is the most difficult thing for a parent to do. Very difficult. If you ask me, my parents until now haven't really fully let go of the control. <laughs> it will start coming back. But you must see why this happened. Because when the baby is born, the baby cannot do anything. So the mother and father do everything for them, determine everything for them. This happens until like until they go into primary school. And primary school, slowly they start changing. Secondary school, you'll see many of them will disengage because now they are beginning to become an individual themselves. Their hearts speak to them. They want to do the things differently. And then they see the way of what the family is doing might or might not be aligned in certain things that they want to do. That's why you'll see a lot of teenagers become quiet, reserved, pull back and all. But on the yep. parent yep. side, they are used to, 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 to you know, determining everything. Okay, mm -hmm. And that's the letting go of the control part. How did I do this? This is very difficult to do. Okay, I actually have a mentor and I had to go and tell him this. I have to talk to him at certain points in time. Okay, I've got very successful daughters, which is good. But the successful daughters also mean... Um, they, I had to let go of control of them earlier than most parents. They, because now they are CEOs and all, right? I cannot be running this there, so and all, right? But in the beginning, like sometimes when some things are happening, um, I cannot tell a CEO how to run her company. And eventually, you see, Ascendance is a big organization. He, I cannot tell Hira how to do her stuff and all. So it's like it's no more um, 
one of the thing that I let go of control is, um, see, accepting the fact that they are adults and accepting the fact they might make mistake. And one of the thing that um, it's it's not an easy process, lah. Huh? It's not a simple easy process. I give you one example that might give you a an idea. I am an accountant by profession, okay, and and I am. I, I I I grew up in a safe environment. Okay, you you know you go to you you go to work, you got gaji tetap, and you you know you there's a safe copper career ladder. And mm. my elder daughter tells me, elder elder children always will freak you out first because your first child, right? Okay, so she tells me she wants to be a singer. So I thought, ah, okay, never mind, it'll go off. But it didn't go off. Every year she keeps saying this consistently. And when I met ET ideas, it became much stronger because now she set her goal. Now, you know, it's like you 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 brought her for a goal setting. Uh, you know, people were talk about goal setting. Also, she set a goal. She won't be a singer. And then one of the thing they asked her is, Did, "Are you working on it?" So she said no, and all. Then she said, "Okay, I'll start working on it." So she did work on it. She did put her initiative as well. She started writing songs. She started performing and all. And then when she went, she finished her IGCSE. She was the top scorer in the school's history. And she tells me, I want to be a professional singer. I was like, fine. <laughs> when you study first, then you become a professional singer. That's what every mother do, right? Because for me, it's like finish your education first. It's a safe zone. Mm. Safe this one. Then you become a professional singer. When we went to all these universities looking for, she got scholarships somehow, you know. In, you know mm. But the scholarships that she got was in other areas, not music, aeronautical engineering and all. Okay. So she said, I don't want this. What am I going to do this? I want to be a singer. This one, um, part of me, I understand. The other part is scholarship. Ah, you do one. Ah, was difficult. That means I need to handle yeah, it. very difficult, yeah. Very difficult because now somebody is paying for education. You say, do one. Ah, okay, never mind. It's okay. Then she also told me something like, I'm not like you. I can, I'll die if I work nine to five in our office. I look at it also. I also didn't want to do that nine to five. I also want the freedom and all, right? So maybe... Maybe let me allow her to be happy. Let me allow her to do what she wants to do. So fine. So she said this. Then I went to all these universities uh, looking for music course. All the courses were about music. Mm. It was like history of music, that, this and all. She was already performing. So she's like, how is any of this going to make me a performer? But I'm a mother, you know. I'm very good at convincing my way to my children. And making it feel like it was their idea. So I, in the end, I uh, somehow got her to see I should go to college. You know, okay. So we were going to do this. Then my mentor, just before we sign up for college, the, my mentor called me and he called both of us and he told Hira, "Can you?" He, he gave this software called Ableton, which looked like some rocket going. Uh, I, I look at it. The software also very scary. He looked at the, he showed the software and he told Hira, "Can you compose a song?" She said, "Can." I'll come back in a few days. I was very confused. I asked her, how are you going to do this? Do you need to go for any class? She said, no need, ma. I'll just Google it. I was like, Google? Uh, for me, it means I must study something in class. <laughs> so about a few days, less than a week later, she came back with this song, very nice genre of song. The song was very nice. That's the time it hit me. If I send this girl to college, she's a creative girl. If I send her a 17 years old to college, she will become boxed up. That means for her will be one plus one plus two is one plus one is two. Mm. She cannot think of anything else. She'll become very structured too early. Whereas her career that she's choosing is one of creativity. She hasn't explored this creativity yet. So that's when I took the difficult decision to tell her, never mind, you don't need to go to college. You do this, 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 uh, uh, your, your performance career uh, well. As long as you don't stay home and do nothing, lah. Okay. Mm. And she turned around and said, "No, no, I want to go to college." Remember, I convinced her, right? We were over convinced. <laughs> I convinced her back. No, no, that one wasn't your idea. It was mine only. When I realized, okay. For the next two months after that, she stayed home and she wasn't really doing anything. This freaked me out because I'm like, "Don't tell me you say you want to be a singer, but you're not doing anything." You, you know, you you suddenly you become a bum means how? Mm. It is an important years of your life. So that fear kicked in, and I told her, "You say you want to do this." I say, okay, I don't see you doing anything. Then I stand, I stand, I say, if you want to do the things the way ETIDs do it, you must follow. Lah. 
you must get up in the morning and then she started lah, get up in the morning she started a lot more with the discipline ascendance she started working on her skills on 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 running projects she started working on other things as well as her songwriting getting it out there you know so if you ask me if i had stopped her then she wouldn't be the singer songwriter who's winning awards today because mm. today she's winning because her creativity is different so that five years has gone she has become now she's an international star she gets uh, featured on radios overseas and in malaysia as well and all her songs are coming out and all she's really a star in her own right another mm. thing that, that i that made her success is I, i i don't like the music industry my own experience is musicians cannot make money make they money. cannot uh, they cannot make money and it's mm. not a very nice industry for women Okay, but I didn't tell her this. I just make sure she sees um, she doesn't fall. That means she don't perform in in places that she don't want to perform. She only chooses her performance, her concert, you know. And she also knows goal setting. She knows how to take the action. You know? So once she started following all this, I see the the progress she's doing. I got a lot more confident, a lot more uh, supportive of all this. Then this year she tells me. We we look at it and we now she's a lot more people, dealing with people in the US and all this year she look at it and she said okay maybe I can I apply to Howard and see let's see apply lah she apply she got in she got in because of all her records she, of course she's a good student but there yeah. are many good students but she now has won awards she has a lot of work with Ascendant she has done she has uh, started mm. a social movement so seeing all this they accepted her in. Now she's in a university that I never thought she can go. She's not in any university, you know. She's in the best university in the world. Best university in the world. And why is she there? Is no more for her music. The music she already knows. It is more to um, okay. What happens? How she wants to take this uh, musical career to the next level? It is international relationship. It's the media relationship. It's a. Uh, um, turning this into an academy the critical mm-hmm. thinking all those things the other skills she has, she needs she's getting there oh another thing is connections when you go to university you stay not only the exposure is the connections as well so she mm-hmm. is going there now because she's already a singer a songwriter she's successful what's next yeah. okay so so it, mm-hmm. it worked out well because i listened to her instead of I did. Try, I mean, without realizing, I tried to influence her. Then, when I realized it, I I stepped back. So that's nice. my long explanation, Stephen. <laughs> Very nice, Rasla. I I really like it. I think you still have a lot of experience to share regarding how did you let this control go. But if you guys want to contact mm-hmm. Rasla, just contact Rasla. Just let me know. I will see how I can help you guys as well. So uh, we have few more minutes, Rasla. I want to ask you this one question that asked by one of our, the parents who are watching here right now. which i wanted to know this answer personally because uh, they asked this question where like last time our parents and everything they used to to make us discipline to follow the things that we are doing to do to, to, to not to do some stupid things and all they beat us like they they punish us this kind of things that actually shapes us who we are right now for me personally my mother beat me up and everything but that uh, if you never do that i wouldn't have to be a person i cannot be a person like i am today right now So for me, it's good, but there are th- some things that you cannot beat people, cannot beat the kids, and everything. It's become a huge controversy now. So the parent asked, like, how will you punish the kids or this kind of things without getting into trouble like this or some this, this kind of things? Okay, the problem is we like to generalize things. We like to say, uh, cannot beat. Beat means wrong. Must beat. Son, okay, this whether you should you should uh, smack your children, you whack your children, or um, whether you want to talk to them, it depends on the child. It depends on what the child needs. That means if I whack my children, it won't work. I don't need to whack. I just say here are enough for you to start crying. So I'm like, okay, fine. So it's like because they 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 are very hard on themselves already. So I need to use the other one. Never mind, never mind. It's okay and all. Okay, so it depends on the child itself. So for some children, okay, what do you want the child to do? You want the child to. It it depends. Okay, so let's say you want the child to study. You mm. beat the child for what? The child might not be. You have to investigate what is the problem. 
it may be because they are unhappy with a certain teacher. I'll give you an example. There was one time Hira was crying, crying, don't want to go to school. I still don't know what to do. In the end, I realized the one of the course she's taking, this is in kindergarten. One of the, this one is Chinese. She's scared of the Chinese teacher because she don't want to speak that thing. That's all. Uh. So I just went and told the Chinese teacher, never mind, she cannot talk, never mind, she cannot understand, never mind. The Chinese teacher was like, she crying because of me. Uh. But we didn't know this. We solved that already, then the problem okay. Right? So you need to see what is the source of the problem. It means mm -hmm. instead of whacking or not whacking, you know, what's causing this in this child? Okay, you have to investigate that problem, number one. Number two is, if you want to whack or you don't want to whack or what, depends on are you okay or not. That means, if, if sometimes I tell these people all don't listen, then, okay, maybe I need to be firm. I need to, I don't whack, but maybe I can, I need to, you know, scold. Okay, because whatever, the idea of me, this one is, I need to communicate it in a manner that they understand. And sometimes certain tone or certain pain or what only will get them to listen. Fine. So if I'm working or I'm scolding, am I doing this because this is the right thing? I already thought, okay, others are not working. Now I need to get into this role and, and do this. Or am I doing it because I'm frustrated, I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm letting go my anger by whacking the child. Second one, very, very dangerous. Because you that the, the, the point in focus is not the child. It's, it's you. Lepas geram lah. <laughs> uh, that means you cannot lepas geram. Okay, or, and many, many, many parents do this. Uh, or cannot, not say, not only lepas garam. Um, another thing is, my parents wreck me, so I wreck you. I cannot do so. Because you are a different child, they are different child, they are, your child is different, and the environment you are growing up in is different. Okay, but uh, my parents never wreck me, I'm not going to wreck you. You don't know. You don't know who this, this child that came to you, what they need, you don't know. But you will know in your heart, you will know if you are calm and if you are thinking. Okay, there means mm. a lot of times when we are reacting from our emotions and some of we will react from what other people say. One uncle will come and say, why your son like this? Huh? Or why your daughter like this? Huh? Uh, but one of the things they told me in the beginning is, school night, why you take your children out to the talks? Uh, every other time, my, some relative will come and tell me this. Eventually, my children did so well in school with the talks and all that this all stopped. Then they all come and ask me, how your child do this? Huh? Can can you, can you also help my child to do it? <laughs> so, so, you, so, But if I had reacted to them and, and stopped the, the, them from going for these talks and all and doing the things they're doing, then they won't be who they are today. So, so you need, you actually know, you as a mother or father, you actually know what's best for your child. So when you know that, you you have to you have to cite your child. You have to think and talk to your child. Mm. And that could be talking, that could be whacking and all. I know because my brother was not an easy person to handle. So sometimes I must whack. Okay? But you cannot whack out of frustration. You must It must mm. be whacked because have I got whacking? Not really. But I know that I, the rotan has come out. And I know it has come out because you're not listening. You have tried the other ways that not yes. working. Yes, yes. That means other ways not working, this works. Like until today, right? Alarm clocks don't work for my daughters. Okay, they, they won't wake up. But the moment I say, here are that my tone only, they'll wake up. So I say, why don't you record that and use as your alarm clock? Because <laughs> they actually they're scared. Okay, they're scared of that tone. Okay, so it's like certain things will work at certain point for certain people. And you will know the, which is best. If you are thinking, if you are emotional, then cannot you have to calm down your emotions first. It is many things to do. One thing I learned from your sharing was uh, it's many things to do as a parent, as an individual, to handle ourselves better, so that you can you can you know focus your best to the child as well. Like because they learn from you, they look at you, they learn from you. They don't listen to you actually, but they yes. look at you. They they yes. they live so, the life that you are. You cannot tell your child. Be on time. Don't be late. But you are late all the time. <laughs> you cannot do that. Okay? And you cannot tell your child, study. But you not doing your work. You yourself cannot do what you're asking them to do. Yeah. So, yes. You need to be able to practice what they are doing. Yeah. 
we have Hira watching the show and then she say, I got goosebumps hearing the tone in this video. So, <laughs> yes. so certain tone I will be able to freak out. Yeah, we have Vignesh Soren asking, can you kindly share the platform which you use to get the kids to do the goal setting? Uh, for those of you who are looking into like, how how can, how can I get my kids to do this? How can I do this? Like, because Walsla have a goal and she set the goal and she work on the goals, the kids also follow them, uh, follow the mother to do what they are doing and everything. So that's become a very nice family. The, both, all three of them in the family are very successful. So if you're looking into something like that, you can always contact me. If you have my number, you can contact me or you can PM me in my Facebook. Or this is my number, actually. Uh, I'm Steven, by the way. So this is my number. You can contact me directly and I will be uh, getting in touch with you to share with you more about how you can get to know more about this goal setting program for your kids and also for yourself. So Because it's two different platforms. For the youngsters, different, youngster, platform. different yep. platform. For the adults, it's a different platform. Depending on what you want, what you're looking for, that's why Steven said contact him. So yeah, nice. and I also I also don't think it, it will work as nicely as, uh, as as I don't think it will work nicely if only your kids working into your goal, working into their goals and everything. Like what works was for Walsla and the two other kids is the Walsla's kids is they work towards their goal as a family, so they complement each other. Yes, before, Walsla, before is, and one last thing is um, the letting go the control. Eventually, you have to become friends with your children. Okay, that means like 19, 22 years old and all, I'm no more their mother. I mean, I am their mother, uh, but <laughs> I'm no more acting like their mother. If I act like their mother, they won't hang out with me. Okay, and I, you know, it's like, so it's like I let go once you let go the control and you share with them truthfully things that happen in your life, they also come back and share with you and you, they, you break down the mother-daughter barrier. That means if they talk about boys to me, uh, I mean, I'll freak out last time, but I learned how to do, accept that if I don't hear this, guess who will they hear? They will talk to their friends who don't know anything. Yes. Wrong advice. yes. So I might start to them, but you cannot stop them. That means you must accept they're growing up and eventually build a relationship to become friends. Then mm -hmm. it's very beautiful. Then you enjoy their success as well. Okay. Yep. Sorry. I just realized my number is wrong. In the chat. Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, now it we should be okay. Those of you who contacted me in the wrong number, this is the correct number. So you can contact me again. So so sorry. Thank you, Vasla, for being here, for sharing all your stories. And I think raising successful children into a 30 minutes talk is never enough. You have so much of experience to share. At least I think Hira is 22 years old, so we have 22 years of experience to share on how did you actually raise uh, both of them in a nice way. But this is all the time we have. Maybe we can do a part two in near future. So if you guys want audience, you can contact Basla or you can contact me directly. And I can see how I can connect with you guys correctly in a way. So Walsla's company, Glototo Consultancy, actually does programs for adults, parents, how they can focus on their goal, whatever goal that they have. If your goal is to focus on your kids, make them, you know, raise them in a nice way and everything, Walsla can actually help you guide uh, with that. And I'm the head of marketing and sales for Glototo Consultancy as well. So you can, anytime you can contact me, let me have a chat with you and see how we can help you out. So thank you, Walsla, for being here today and sharing your wonderful sharing. For those of you who are watching, thank you for being awesome audience. And thank you, thank you, Ignace. Thank you, Lakshmi. Okay, now I can see more people. Thank you. Yeah, you can see more people. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. See you guys uh, next week for another episode of Talk with Steven. Until then, bye. Have a good day and stay safe. Thank you. Bye.